Alright guys, welcome to your next Android tutorial. So this video we're going to go back to our JSONC format and what we need to do is we need to find on this page the uh, feed for a, um, for a user. to do just look here now I'll find it there for you okay so I, I managed to find it uh, so what we're going to do is you want to say we create a feed a string object feed URL equals and then in our inverted commas so this is a general form of it and where we put username here we're just going to change that to twisted equation a t i l n s twisted equations so let's actually just very quickly put this into our browser and see what comes back so we get all this nonsense. We're going to be parsing this nonsense. Now what we'll actually be doing is we're going to limit our views or limit our amount of things. So we need to add some extra parameters. So this is URL. This is a URL for the feed. And what we need to do is we need to add some parameters. So this parameter means here version equals to alt, which means this is our format. JSON C. YouTube has their own variant of JSON. It's the same as normal JSON. If they call the normal JSON format is all the video metadata, which is a lot of information that we don't need. JSON C is a more stripped down version. So all the good JSON C and start and the so we want to have start index equals one and max results. Equals ten. So what this actually does is this tells the uh, the uh, URL or wherever we're getting the state or YouTube essentially to say, give us the first ten results. So if we type that in, we get a much shorter version of it. As you can see, it's not nearly as long or as complicated. For example, if I get rid of all this, it'll if I put in uh, twenty videos and reload it. Oh damn! Sorry, whoops. 20 and load yeah big longer list of videos so we're just going to work with 10 videos for now so how do we actually get the data down we need to make a request to the we need to make a request to the server and in order to do that we are going to use the apache java http library that's built into android so in order to do that we need to create a http client Client, and so we have client. Good, and we import, and it should say org at Apache .http .client. So we're good to go. Yeah, this is actually giving us a slight error here. Hang on a second. Okay, so I actually mix it up. It needs to be a new default. Yep. So we're just going to import that. So we've got that ready. So what is this client object? Well, think of the client like the browser. Okay. Uh, I find this very useful for thinking of these things. So if the client is the browser. So let's say Google Chrome. We're going to make our we're going to build our request object, which would be what we want the browser to do, and then we're going to uh, execute that request, and it'll do whatever it needs to do. Then we're going to pull the data. So when we execute the request, the server will respond with something. We'll pull out that response. 
So first off, we create our client. So now the request we're going to make is a HTTP GET. And then we're just going to say GET request. Or E Q U E S T. Get. So we'll just import HTTP get. Now the get here, we actually haven't tell, told it what we want to get. So what we want to do is we want to get our feed URL. Now that will get that data from that feed URL. So now we need to uh, execute that client. So C L I E N client dot execute and our get request. So that the execute we're going to request the execute. So this will say server get this data. So this is telling the server to get the data. So we're executing x dot equals. Damn it! I fucking misspelled it. I'm stupid. Damn. Execute. New the request now. We need to surround this with a try catch. If you think about this, okay, you're calling a server on the internet. What happens if the user's phone is in his pocket, uh, switched off? What happens if the user has mobile data turned off? What happens if the user has no internet connection? This then will fail and cause errors. Uh, client protocol exception, I/O exceptions. There's exceptions everywhere. We're going to ignore them for now for, to, for the sake of time. So we've executed the request, but how do we actually get the body of the request? Well, we have to get our body or our, uh, our response. Response. HTTP response. Sorry, we need to get our HTTP response from the client. So the client executes it. We now have a response. So we need to check to make sure that the request went through okay because sometimes the server could deny a request. We could not be authorized. Now we are authorized to make get requests for your uh, feeds of videos on YouTube. Anyone can do that. But let's say we wanted to post a video to YouTube or delete a video from the list. Well, then you have to be authenticated. And if you're not authenticated, the server will yell at us and say no and give us a bad response. So what we want to say is if response dot get status code, I believe I'm looking for. Hang on. Ah, yes. We uh, sorry. We need to get a status line. Line equals uh, response. Dot get status line, and then from this we'll get our code itself. So that's our status line. So the status line would be would look something like HTTP 1.1. Okay, 200 okay, so it's generated 400, which means 200 means the, the, the uh, request executes correctly, we're good to go. Now there's other status codes, you might not recognize some of them or know some of them. The common one is 404, which means not found, which means that resource doesn't exist. But anyway, we need to say in status code, with status line, get status code so we're good to go and then we need to just check to the status code our so we got is 200 200 so that means if it's equal to 200 that means our code that we got back the server is telling us yep everything's grand uh, so then what we want to do is we want to get the body of a request tell you what so if it's not equal to 200, return. So that just means if the uh, if it's not equal to 200, something's gone wrong. 
uh, return null sorry for racing task it, I mean, as a result they have, it's gone wrong somewhere just return out with this ignore what happened and then when this returns this will run and dismiss our dialog so now what we need to do is we've got this running we need to get our response body the actual JSON data so we're going to say string JSON equals response dot get body or get sorry is it get entity dot god damn it okay so we actually need to create our input stream sorry I'm a little rusty on this input stream so what we've done essentially is now we've checked everything everything checks out get our input stream and write that to a string so now that we've got our stream we need to buffer reader this into a string so if it be as a BRED buffer input I believe it's this reader buffered reader whoops buffered reader and then we need our input stream reader so we'll create a new reader and a content oh sorry it's json stream whoops so what this line is going to do is we've essentially opened at this point here we've opened the connection to the internet we've got our status the body of the page is more than likely huge but what we've done here is we've actually gone off we've got our connection and we're now going to pull down the data from the internet so we've checked our status code so we've sent back a response we've got our stream we're ready to go so we've got our stream this reader will essentially just read the data in so what we want to do is we want to get a string builder in order to convert this to a string builder I really like string builders are really nice so create our string builder so now what we need to do is we need to zoom through the string and build it onto a string our stream and then build it to a string so we need a while loop while now what we want to do is we want to say hang on a string line line equals what read line So what we're going to do is we're going to read this line by line so the buffered reader will read a line from our input stream and then that line will then be appended onto the string so the builder will, will just add on so we're going to, we're going to go line by line through the response and we're going to add on that data into one ginormous string so we're just going to create this so what this loop does is it performs this so it goes line read the line okay and then if this whole thing returns null that means we've reached the end stop reading the line we're ready to go so then we just uh, uh, builder dot append and we'll just say line so simply what we've done there is we're just adding our build our string to our builder now we've got our string. Oh, we've got our 
Jason takes it. Booger. Dot append. Or but dot build. Sorry. Short build. Brain farting heavy today. It's builder up to string. I thought it was builder up build for some reason. Oh, that's for that. That's for dialogue building. I'm mixing everything up. So now we've got our JSON data, and simply we're just going to say uh, log dot i. And our tag would be YouTube JSON data. You JSON data. I don't really care. And we'll just log the data for now. And when we run this, we should get. It's working correctly. So let's run. Okay, there's something going on here with my thing. That conflict shouldn't have happened. That was a simple error with uh, probably with just with the way things worked. So I'm going to break the footage now and it's, it stopped working. What happened? I've made a very silly error. I never created my Android permission. I, God, I'm stupid. Added user's permission. Internet. Check our manifest. Sorry, we never added our permission. So you have to add a permission in order for a, uh, an Android device to connect to the internet. Something which I very foolishly didn't do. It made the request anyway. Well, that told us that I tried to connect to the internet, but it didn't really work. And we have failed it again. What has happened this time? Okay, so I found what was wrong. Um, it only took me a couple of seconds here. The public class, I had it set to private. You can't a private class. You can't make an instance of a private class very easily. That's what was wrong. But anyway, as you can see here, if I bring this up and go full screen, you can see here. Look, I remember I logged the data. Well, it, the thing ran, and as you can see all the data is here logged now it doesn't log all of it because the data is so much of it but we've got our data successfully so in the next video we're going to process this data and put it onto our list